So in the last session, we discussed about what is the meaning of Oracle and application and financials. Oracle is database or you can say company name. When we talk about application, application means there will be set of pages or forms, database and reports. A combination of these four, three components we call as application. And financials. The applications which are dealing with the finance related data, money related activities, those applications we are calling as financials. Financials is one of the product family. Financials is one of the product family. So there are many product families from Oracle side. In overall, we have around 300 applications from Oracle. We are going to learn financials applications Within the financials application, from which application, primarily what we are going to learn from payables, purchase invoice and payment process, from receivables, sales invoice receipt, and fusion fixed assets, asset creation under depreciation, from cash management, bank accounts, and general ledger financial reports. By using fusion, fix, fusion expense, we can create employee expense our employee expense reports. With the help of fusion tax, we'll be able to calculate the tax. This is what we discussed. When we work on financials as Oracle Fusion Financial Consultant, when we work on the financials as Oracle Fusion Financial Consultant, we should aware of SEM also. We should know the basics. We should know the basics of SCM, supply chain management, so that when we are working on financials, you find more comfort. If you are working on payables or receivables, these applications always interact with the supply chain management related applications. If you have a basic knowledge from SCM, you'll be able to manage any scenario, any case. So what are the basic applications we are going to learn from SCM, supply chain management? Let's see here. Our primary focus would be on financials. Along with the financials, we have to learn basics from SCM. So from which application, what we are going to learn from SCM? We have an application called as Oracle Fusion Inventory, and you can take product management also. That is a combination to use warehouse management product. Oracle Fusion Inventory that can be supported by product management. The management. The inventory short name is INV. The other application is Oracle Fusion Order Management. Short name is OM. The one more application which we take as a part of SCM, even it is not a SCM product, that is Oracle Fusion Purchase. Primarily, these two applications we call as SCM applications. SCM means supply chain management. When we are going to supply any material to your customers to manage the process of receiving orders from the customer and contacting the warehouse department, sourcing the material from warehouse and shipping to the customer, this complete process comes under supply chain management. If stock is not available in the organization, the supply chain process may take help from purchasing department to source the material from suppliers. If stock is available, the two departments can handle complete supply chain execution processes. So what purpose we are going to use fusion inventory application to maintain the stock? Primarily, this is the purpose.
purpose is to maintain the stock for stock maintenance. You can maintain the stock within the warehouse, which you product, how much quantity we have that can be managed within the warehouse. By using Oracle order fusion, Oracle fusion order management, we can record the sales orders. If any order order come uh, order will come from the customer that we can record in the system as a sales order. By using the order management application, we can record the sales order. And what are the various steps you have to follow when it comes to fulfilling that sales order, executing the sales order, you have to track complete information within the order management. The primary purpose of order management is to record the sales orders, to record and process the sales orders. When we talk about purchasing application, primarily to create purchase orders. Say we need one computer in our organization. It may be for the purpose of to use in your office or to sell to your customers. The reason could be anything. If you want to buy something in your organization, purchasing department support is required. The purchasing department can raise the purchase order by stating what item we need, how much quantity, when we required, where supplier has to ship that material, keeping all the details in the purchase order, Purchasing department can take initiative. So these are the three other departments or other applications which we should aware. Along with the financials, we'll go through these three applications, what level of knowledge we require so that our job will become easy once we get into the work. When we are going to work on all these applications, when we work on all these applications, Definitely, we have to take support from a few other applications for different purposes. You are implementing financials or you are implementing financials under supply chain. Supply chain application should be implemented by SCM consultant. There will be separate consultant for SCM. Say we are implementing financials applications and when we are going to work on financials applications, which other applications we should aware? Those are like, it's a very small size. In When you talk about size, it's very small and nothing to do with that much. When we are, when, if you want to use this financial application, so we have to do something else on top of implementing these applications, what those areas and the, what is the purpose we are trying to understand now. Those applications we can call as Oracle Fusion BPM. The BPM stands for Business Process Management, Oracle Fusion BPM, Business Process Management. The other application is sorry, Oracle Fusion FSM. FSM stands for Functional Setup Manager. Functional setup setup manager and few other applications like Oracle Fusion IDM or you can call as OIM also. It stands for Oracle Identity Manager. Oracle Fusion Enterprise Structure. So these are not kind of exactly applications. So by using these features, you will be able to support all these setups. If you want to implement these applications, we have to do some setups in the system. Those setups you can perform by using functional setup manager to perform the setups, or you can say configuration. 
by using oracle fusion fsm functional setup manager we can perform the setups or say we can do the configuration with the help of bpm business process management we can set approvals you want to implement approvals whenever you create the purchase invoice within the payables application so user created purchase invoice before making the payment approvals are required you can use bpm application to set the approvals so in the purchase department buyer created purchase order before sending the purchase order to their suppliers to get the material it should be approved within the purchasing department use bpm to set up the approvals so how the approval should work within your organization all the rules you can create by using the bpm business process management oracle identity or idm just when you look at this oam it stands for oracle identity manager idm stands for identity manager without oracle idm stands for just identity manager oam stands for oracle identity manager both are same by using idm we can manage the security your security means you can create the users and you can assign the you can give the permissions to the user for what data they need access other area is oracle fusion enterprise structure when we use these fusion applications for any company we have to bring their business environment into system environment physically how they are doing the business now how many locations they are operating the business what are the businesses they are doing so what are the activities they are doing in the business what business process they follows what are the departments in place this all you can bring into the system environment into virtual environment by using the concept called as enterprise structure fusion enterprise structure with this we can provide the solution for the entire organization we'll go one by one the sequence of activities as of now this is what we have to understand our primary focus would be on these five applications which are core applications we call along with that we will touch base these two applications and when we work on financials application if you have a basic knowledge on supply chain management that will be added advantage for that reason i am going to take you through how these applications can be useful to understand when you are working on financials we will have a couple of sessions on those you work on financials or you just work on scm these applications are very much important these areas we have to focus these are not applications so bpm business process management this you can treat as application so fsm functional setup manager it is not kind of application it is kind of environment to centralize in place where you can do any application related setups again idm idm you can call as application this is for the purpose of managing the user security you can create users and you can delegate privileges to those users which user responsible for what as per real business accordingly you can give the permissions to the users to access the system an enterprise structure to bring the company business environment into system environment you can use this so this is what you have to understand any questions here please any questions from anyone okay good no question Uh, actually, uh, I have one question, um, um, uh, Lakshman. Yes. Uh, this, I mean, like, do, we don't touch projects anywhere. I mean, in this, 
uh, when we're talking about uh, either uh, Oracle finances or uh, a supply chain, we don't get in touch with projects at any point of time. We never get into PPM. Okay, what you are referring that is a PPM projects. You, you can uh, you can mute yourself. Let me answer since there is some background noise from your end. Yeah, I'll answer to your question. So PPM is a separate product family. When we work on the financials, so financials will have a very close interaction with the SCM, supply chain management. So to understand the standard business processes, we are going to see the basics from supply chain, but projects are PPM, project portfolio management is a complete solution you can establish, you can interface the data from financials to PPM, but we are not going to see that. That is a complete separate area to give you some inputs, to give you some inputs when we are working on financials. I'll just show you if you want to send the data from financials to projects, how to send. It's a very simple point to understand. When you create the transactions in the financials, you can specify if the transaction is belongs to projects, how we can specify. This is what we have to understand. When we are working as a financial consultant, you no need to involve in the project related tasks or activities other than tagging the information which is related to which project. Any other questions, please? Uh, one question, Lakshmi Please. Um, actually, uh, regarding supplier setup, payment on setup, and all uh, setups that we do in R12. So here in Fusion, it, do we do through this uh, functional setup manager only? No setup is in AP uh, means uh, application. Yes. yes. If you are relating with a EBS. You know, hmm. there we use a concept called as a responsibility. Within the responsibility, you can see the menus which support setups as well as processes. Yes. In Fusion, they isolated those setups, setup environment and do transaction environments. By using FSM, Functional Setup Manager, only you can perform the setups. You cannot create any transaction. If you want to create the transactions, you need additional privileges that we will discuss. Okay. They separate it. Okay. Okay. Got your point. Means all the setups will be done through this functional setup manager only, right? You are right. Okay. Second, uh, one more question. Just want to understand the meaning of cloud. Actually, yesterday you explained Oracle database. Yeah, we, are, we are just moving to that topic okay. after discussing okay. few more points. Okay, okay. These two are pending. Fusion as well. Fusion and cloud. cloud. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we'll understand. Yeah. Thanks. Well, this is Ganesh. So, if you want to know about projects, and would you be taking a separate class or a separate? Uh, we have a separate course for projects. PP. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. So no questions. Now, so we are going to learn financials. It's always good if you have a basic knowledge on SCM that also we are going to cover. When we work on financials, definitely we have to take support from these areas that also we are going to cover. Without covering these areas, we will not be in the position to take the advantage of these applications. So apart from that, if you want to get the job, you have to focus on few areas, which always you find as a, in the real time world. So I'm going to take you through certain items like the real time implementation process. After completing this course, 
if you want to get job based on this skill set definitely you need knowledge how the real time projects takes place what would be the complete process what exactly our role would be in the project there is a lot of stuff which you have to understand what methodologies companies follows what sequence of activities we do what purpose we interact with the client and what are the activities we do how the solution design can be done how we take the requirement and what are the various documents we prepare and what is the naming convention we use this all comes under real time by just doing this course if you try for the job max you will fail if interviewer is going to ask you could you please explain what how we do the implementation you cannot explain definitely you need this experience for that i am going to will will have a few sessions to address this information okay so real time implementation process and here we have a different projects we deal as a part of real time and support project roll out projects upgradation project and the documentation and a this is one of the methodology application implementation methodology which we use for application implementation purpose other methodologies o u l oracle unified methodology and you need interview preparation interview preparation guidance resume building if required certification so you have to understand how the implementation projects can be executed in the reality okay uh, let me include the real time implementation project process and how support projects can be managed and the roll out projects up upgradation projects how these different type of projects can be executed in the real world i'll take you through all the details along with that in uh, any project how what documents we have to prepare so which documents we have to prepare we will discuss and aim application implementation methodology when you do the implementations we use aim or oem almost aim is outdated but still few companies are using and now latest methodology is oem so oem methodology is designed and developed by oracle so oracle is recommending use this methodology when you do the implementation for any client so that everything you will be able to manage and you can keep everything on track after completing all the applications and this real time related focus you have to understand how you have to prepare for your interview you have to follow certain strategy to bring the better outcome from your learnings to present in the interview that i'll just i'll talk about it and if anybody is looking for profile yes we will provide you the sample profile and you can just update and you can use how you, you require and when we talk about certifications within this core financials the certification is available for payables receivables and general ledger and another point is it is not important still if you are planning to do the certification i would recommend you can pick any one of the application probably you can pick payables application so that is enough okay that is enough so this is how you can plan okay this is how you can plan so you will get 
some sort of support from our end if you are planning for certification you will get assistance for sure so this is all about what we are going to learn so this section this is related to completely real time what i did is i created videos for around 15 hours i just uh, created 15 hours videos and those videos i am going to share you can go through if you have any questions we'll have one session to work on those queries so for this area you'll get videos 15 hours i explained everything very very detail level from the scratch anyone can understand what you find within those videos because i explained very very detail level you don't get any questions if you get any questions you can contact me so this is all about the entire course any questions from any one place and another few points to address the classes which i am going to conduct it would be based on the real time approach when we are working for any client as a part of implementation project how we start with the implementation what is the sequence of steps we follow since we are learning i am not going to drive you in the different approach our approach would be the real time implementation approach if you are working for any company to to implement oracle fusion financials application what is the first step second step third step and everything what we are going to learn within that applications we go by real time business cases real time scenarios we focus on theoretically and the system point of view and process point of view and accounting point of view when you talk about accounting if you are not aware of accounting you no need to worry about the accounting part it is not such such kind of complex accounting everything oracle automated you no need to play anything with accounting just you have to go and provide the data by seeing the field if there is one field called as expense in the application go and enter expense account that account you will get from the client you enter there once business will start using the system then automatically system can generate the accounting entries you no need to go and play with any accounts during the system uses so this is what we have to understand our primary focus would be we'll understand everything theoretically we should get the conceptual understanding and system configuration if if you want to use the system what configuration need to be ready we'll focus on that and once configuration or say setups are ready in the system environment how to use the system how to use payables how to use receivables how to use any application so that would be our next level focus and when you create the transaction automatically system will create the accounting entries yes we'll go through those accounting entries and once data is ready in the system definitely business need to generate the reports i'll walk through what are the reports are available and where you can find the reports how you can run the reports we'll discuss in that area also so this is a complete uh, kind of curriculum of our course if any questions from anyone please i'll walk through detail course curriculum also after discussing detail course curriculum we'll discuss about what is a fusion what is a cloud how these are different compared to other uh, models we'll come to know all this so before we move move to other areas of discussions any questions from anyone please lakshman this is ganesha yeah. so would you be talking about the sla oracle sla or that will not be part of it? yes oracle sla is a part of every application okay for okay. all these applications we have oracle sla except oracle fusion general ledger so except tax for tax also you don't find for remaining all you'll find sla sla is one of the concept we are going to see in our classes okay yeah thank you yeah, thanks any other questions
No questions. So this is the course curriculum, which we are going to cover as a part of this training program. As we discussed, our primary focus would be on core five financials applications. Along with that, we will see the expense and the tax, how these are going to be helpful. And uh, when we talk about SCM, supply chain management, we'll focus on these three applications, purchasing, inventory, and you can say product management, order management. To understand the basic business processes, which takes place across finance and supply chain management, we'll go through the P2P and O2C cycles, procure to pay cycle, order to cash. Procure to pay means right from procurement initiative to till we make the payment to the supplier. So what are the departments are involved in this process? And what is the responsibility of each and every department? Which sequence of activities we have to perform, we will discuss. In case of O2C, we, we are going to understand how we receive the orders from the customers. Once we receive the order, what are the activities we have to perform till we receive the payment from customer? Or right from receiving the order from customer to till we receive the payment from customer, how all the activities can be managed, which are the departments are going to involve in this process, we will understand as a part of O2C cycle because these are repeated activities. That is the reason we are calling as a cycles. We will discuss more detail level. So apart from that, so as we discussed, we will focus on these areas also. And when you look at the detailed course curriculum from Oracle Fusion General Ledger application, this is a basic configuration we are going to do. Once we are ready with basic configuration, these are the different concepts we have as a part of general ledger application. So we'll go through, we'll see like what additional setups we have to do, what is the process we have to follow, in which business case, what functionality or what future can be used by client, we will discuss. We'll discuss and we'll set up in the system and we will execute. That's how we can get hands-on experience. And uh, from payables application, this is a basic configuration. The payables basic configuration is all we are going to configure. We are going to set up in the payables. Once we are ready with the setups, the payables application will allow us to create the different transactions. We discussed invoice and payment. Yes, we have a different type of invoices, different type of payments, different business cases, different business scenarios. Is all you could see here is all we are going to cover. We are going to work on all these concepts. We'll understand and we'll set up and we'll execute. From the receivable side, this is a configuration we have to complete. After configuration, these are the concepts we are going to cover from receivable application. From cash management side, these are the setups. And these are the concepts we are going to handle. From fixed assets, this is a basic configurations. And these are the different concepts which we are going to understand from the receivable side. From fusion expense setups and creating expense report. And finally, making the payment for the same expense report with the help of other applications. From fusion tax, we do these basic setups and we see how tax can be calculated in the respective applications. As a part of P2P cycle, these are the additional configurations we have to do. When you talk about P2P, we have to cover inventory and the purchasing setups. As a part of P2P, we have to cover inventory and the purchasing basic setups so that you can run through the process called as initiating the procurement process to till we make the payment, everything we can handle in the system environment. And these are the various activities we are going to perform 
once we are ready with the P2P setups. As a part of O2C cycle, you could see the basic configuration which is required. After completing setups, we'll go through the process which is involved. From functional setup manager, the purpose is for system configuration purpose. So these are the areas which we touch base from, from FSM functional setup manager and uh, rest there are few areas which we'll start working on those we no need to discuss separately where you have a bpm and we have a few other areas like uh, security which we are calling as idm once we start working on the applications whatever need to be performed in the different other areas also yes anyway we have to do it that is the reason everything i'm not addressing here this is what primarily how to understand as a part of our course curriculum. Fine. Any questions from anyone, please? Intercompany concept that we use, uh, do we use here also? Yes, uh, we will see that. I included a few good notice. Okay. Yes. Any questions from anyone, please? No questions. Now, we'll jump into the concept called as, what is the meaning of fusion? Okay, what is the meaning of fusion as a part of our applications? When you say fusion, what is the meaning of fusion when you talk about the term, what it defines? I'm just talking about the term, English term meaning, the word meaning. What do you mean by fusion? Anyone? Just the word meaning we are talking about. Fusion is when two, two or more atoms fuse together to become one. Okay, good. So that's it what. Is, yeah, please. It's a mixture of all, all these softwares. Exactly. So that's what exactly what Oracle did. Okay. They combined, they merged, they collected, they grouped. They brought many things under one umbrella that they are calling as fusion. What exactly Oracle did? Let's talk about it. Now, so like Oracle, there are many applications available in the market as enterprise applications or ERP, enterprise resource planning applications. We have applications like from Oracle company, and we have applications from SAP. We have application from PeopleSoft and we have application from JDE. JDE means JD AdWords. And we have applications from, say, Seabill. Seabill company. And we have applications from Primavera. Also, you can take uh, Hyperion. many other applications you could see in the market which can be used by business to manage their business data that could be related to financials or supply chain or hcm projects etc now so many companies these are different company names okay you can say software vendors We have many software vendors in the market. As a company, if you want to use the software product to manage your business data very effectively to take the best benefit out of those software product, which application you have to choose? From which company you have to choose? 
when you get that question really it is challenging to choose which company is the best that depends on what business you are doing even if you identify what business you are doing still you will have a challenge say for example for your company you are going to use these solutions so you are running the company for your company you want to use these applications these product families okay you want to use these product families for your company now you started identifying which best software products are available in the market and you started analyzing which is the best fit for your business and you identify or say it's a, the reality i'm going to talk about reality you identified or the reality is oracle product is very famous for financials the oracle company is offering all these they have scm they have procurement they have ppm or say projects crm hcm or you can call as hrms human resource management system oracle has all these products even if they have all these solutions they are very famous for financials if you look at company called sap sap also offering all these with the same names or different names they call finance as a fi fico finance and control and they have all these solutions in place but when you look at sap product sap is very famous for sd sales and distribution which is equal to our supply chain management sap fico is not so great when you compare with oracle financial applications from sap the top product is sd sales and distribution they have all the solutions but the scm solution is very famous from sap which we call as sd sales and distributions and people soft from people soft also we have a different solutions are available but the people soft is very very famous in the market for hcm hcm is very famous it's a very proven solution in the market so any company looking for hcm solution simply they can go and pick from people soft it's very famous it's a wonderful solution they are providing so when we deal with your employees employee related activities or any area you take payrolls smoothly you can run those data and processes or operations by using its cm application for your company and jd jd adverts we call in jd we have some areas good from procurement and scm also cbel product or cbel company cbel vendor is very very famous for crm solutions in the market when you compare cbel crm with oracle crm or sap crm nowhere these two can compete with cbel crm cbel crm is the best in the market and primavera primavera is very very famous for project scheduling related activities take as a simply projects so project scheduling and all primavera is a very good product in the market and hyperion is the best tool in the market for ever reporting as well as budgeting take as a reporting okay the primavera is famous for projects project scheduling and uh, hyperion is good for reporting you have a capabilities within the oracle and sap also for projects but when you compare primavera project scheduling and all 
So this is the best. Okay. You can do the projects and scheduling within the Oracle and SAP also the solutions are available. But Primaware is the best when it comes to your project scheduling activities, scheduling and execution, tracking, etc. Primaware is very good. Now, as a company, if you want to implement all these solutions, what software product you have to choose? Here, here is the list. Which one you have to choose? If you choose Oracle, you get only financials and you have to comp compromise with all these. If you choose SAP, you will get best as a ST and rest of all you have to compromise and you have to use. If you choose PeopleSoft, you may get HCM as the best in the market, rest many you have to compromise. So this is what we have to understand what is the reality. Now what Oracle did is by understanding this situation, what Oracle did is they acquired all these products anyway. The Oracle is owned by Oracle. Okay, the Oracle products are owned by Oracle except SAP remaining all Oracle acquired. Not only this, there are many other products Oracle acquired, many. It's a very big list, very, very big list. Oracle acquired all these products and what they did is they named it as a fusion. They given the title called as fusion. They taken financials from Oracle. The financials they taken from Oracle HCM solution. Now these all are Oracle products. Okay. Now these all are Oracle products. Oracle is already Oracle, it's so Oracle Financials. Now people, PeopleSoft became Oracle PeopleSoft. And JD is Oracle JD, Cbel is Oracle Cbel, Primavera is Oracle Primavera, Hyperion is Oracle Primavera, Oracle Hyperion. So Oracle acquired all these companies, they purchased. Why? Because in every company something is special. They want to build product which is special in every area. Now what Oracle did is by keeping the title as fusion, they taken the best piece which is available from Oracle, that is the financials. Financials they taken from their own product which is Oracle and HCM solution they taken from PeopleSoft which they acquired and procurement they taken from JDE, even SCM and they taken from the different other applications also. CBL solution they are taking from, sorry, CRM solution they are taking from the CBL and project scheduling solution they are taking from Primavera and reporting solution they are taking from Hyperion and that by combining the best solutions which are available in the industry, by combining all these, whatever the best solutions are available in the market, by acquiring those products, they build a product called as Fusion. Now, when you say Fusion, it's a combination of best solutions which supports your entire business related activities or processes. So this is the meaning of Fusion. So you don't need to think Fusion Oracle built Fusion applications from the scratch. No. They acquired. Finance is owned by Oracle and many other. All these solutions are available from Oracle, but comparatively, those are not so great. So that is the reason this is a plan they made and executed. They acquired all these products, all these products they acquired, and they took under umbrella of fusion. The fusion means Finance is best, HCM is best, PRC, procurement SCM is the best, and CRM is the best, projects are best, reporting capabilities are best, everything best can, I mean, everything best you can get from the fusion. That is the meaning of fusion. Any questions here, please?
Yeah, thanks, Rashman, for explaining that. Yeah, thank you. So here, when we access to fusion, you don't see all these as this is people's of HCM, this is from CBEL, this is from CRM, CBEL CRM, this is for Primavera, this is from IP. Everything you see as a Oracle Fusion. Oracle Fusion Financials, Oracle Fusion HCM, Oracle Fusion CRM, everything you see and with the title called as Oracle only. Nowhere you see the legacy of what? These are, these are our legacy of these products. But when you are going to use for your company, you always you find this as a Oracle products because Oracle acquired. Now these all products are owned by your comp Oracle company. So that is the reason this all you see as a, a very so uniform manner. Okay, you don't see with the different different names. Everything is Oracle, Oracle Fusion Finance, Oracle Fusion Projects, Oracle Fusion HCM. And legacies are different. Means the where the source from where they source those products, so that's a different. They acquired and do now they have a privilege to use how they want to use. Any questions, please? Uh, or Eckle acquired these products, uh, right? Or this the company, people, of JTVC? Companies, companies they acquired. Oh. Products acquired and means companies they acquired within the company, what are the products are available? What are, what are the solutions are available from that product, which is owned by so-and-so company? Now those became Oracle products. Company itself they acquired. Okay. Yeah. They acquired completely companies. Now PeopleSoft means there is no PeopleSoft. Oh, that is Oracle PeopleSoft. If you don't have any questions, we can talk about the meaning of cloud. Any questions, please? So no questions I can see. Yeah. So let's talk about what is the meaning of cloud. Now it became buzzword in the market. Cloud, cloud, everywhere cloud. So what does it mean by cloud? Before we go and understand what is the meaning of cloud, if you are not using the cloud, what would be the scenario we'll see? Then we move to cloud so that you can understand what are the advantage of cloud. As a company, you are going to use Fusion applications and you want to, if you want to use the Fusion applications, you have to set up your server infrastructure. You have to set up your server infrastructure so that you can install the product and you can use it. The first thing is servers. As a company, if you want to use Fusion applications, you have to set up servers. The so server infrastructure we have to set up. And what are the applications you are going to use for your company from Oracle? You have to take the license. Okay. You have to take the license. You have a servers in place and you took license from Oracle for so and so product families as per your business process. Now, these products for which products you are taking the license, those need to be installed in your servers. To install these products in the server, you need Fusion Apps DBA. To install Fusion applications, so Fusion Apps means Fusion applications. Application short name is Apps. We need DBA, Database Administrator. Fusion Apps DBA. The DBA can take care of database as well as applications. Switch application, Fusion applications. And what DBA can do is you need DBA, Fusion, D, Fusion Apps DBA we need the DBA can install the Fusion applications. Okay. 
the installation should happen. After installing from your end, your team should take care of networking, security, and a few other admin related activities. And when we start using the server, the DBA should take the responsibility of server maintenance. Server maintenance. In future, if Oracle is going to come up with any latest updates or latest releases, by adding some additional features or by doing some slight changes or by enhancing existing things, you have to upgrade on your own with the help of your team and DBA support, you have to upgrade the product. So you want to use fusion applications for your company, buy servers, take license, and get DBA team, install the applications in your server and so just take care of server networking and the security and server maintenance should be done by DBA. And if your Oracle is going to come up with any latest releases or any updates for the product what you are using and you have to upgrade it for that your team should take initiate. So this environment, buying servers, taking license and uh, installing and managing your servers on your own, this we call as on-premise. This we call as on-premise solution. Why we are calling as on-premise? In your premises, you are hosting the server. Where is the server? In your premises. On your premises, you are going to host the server. That is the reason this we are calling as on-premise. Server would be in your location. That to physical server. Now, you have to spend a lot of money for servers I, and you have to pay good amount of money to take the license for the products and to manage DBAs and network security admin, etc., you have to spend the money and you have to take care of the server maintenance. Say if your DBA is on leave, if DBA is not available for one or two days, if something goes wrong with the server, you will be in the risk. You have to depend on the DBA all the time to up and run that server. Have to make sure that the server is up and running all the time. There should not be downtime. If something goes wrong, the server may not be available. The same time, if your DBA is not available, you will get into the risk. By assuming that situation, you cannot deploy more than one, two, three DBAs. Ideally, one DBA is enough. And most of the time, the DBA would be ideal. They won't have too much of work at all. They do the installation, they do some other activity, then once client will start using. So always their hands would be very, very free. So that is the reason you cannot hire multiple DBAs by assuming somebody may be, uh, would be on the leave and so that other DBA would be available. You cannot do that and you have to face these situations. For that reason, what Oracle it is, what Oracle says, don't buy the servers, don't take the license, don't worry about the DBAs, you no need to do the installation, you no need to take care of the networking security, and you no need to do the server maintenance, and you no need to do the upgrades, everything will take care, and you that we call as cloud. Only the difference is, we, we are deploying the servers or we are hosting the servers on our pr premises. Okay, on our premises, we are deploying the server in our office location. So you are running the business in US. In US, 
you are placed in the physical server in your office location and you are taking care of everything. What Oracle says, don't take all those headaches. Already you are running the business. Don't get into all these headaches. You please pass those headaches to us. We will take care of all those. You run your business. You focus on running your business. Don't worry about all these infrastructures and following up these admins, networking, maintenance. Again, this will become new business to you. Don't do second business. Do whatever you are doing. Rest we will take care of because we are into business. We are into this business. We'll take care of this. What Oracle will do is, in case of cloud, they will provide virtual servers. Physical servers you can have in specific location. As a company, if you de deploy any physical server, yes, you can go and touch it. If you can lift, you can lift it. But virtual servers, you cannot see and you cannot touch. But you can use those how you use physical servers. When you talk about on-premise, there should be some location where servers are residing. Server is residing in your office. But when you talk about virtual servers, where the virtual servers can be resided and how that virtual servers can be generated. In the cloud, cloud computing, okay, again, this is a technology. Cloud computing companies also are at acquired. Not only product based companies, different technologies were at acquired. In those list of technologies, one of the technologies is cloud computing. So now Oracle is one of the big cloud computing company like Amazon and many other like kind of Google and IBM, few other cloud computing vendors. So in the cloud computing technology, what happens is you will be able to produce virtual servers by using the physical servers, by using very big mission, big server, you can produce virtual servers. Your big servers may be in the specific location, but what are the virtual servers you are producing? Those you can keep available internet as a source. Those can float in the internet. Okay. Those can float in the internet that we call as virtual servers. Those can float in the internet. And how those can be supported. So you are running the business in the different location. So USA. India. UAE. Okay. These are the locations you are running. Say so you are running business in Europe. So these are the places you are running the business. When you run the business in these different countries or zones, you are opting for virtual servers. How this virtual server concept would work, I'm trying to explain that. So Oracle uses big servers, big missions. Those are physical, they use virtual servers. And by using these big missions, they can create virtual servers. So virtual server one. Virtual server two. Okay, so virtual server three, enough to understand. So by using a physical server, big mission, which is a physical, they created three virtual servers. Okay, they are generating these virtual servers. Just let me mark it. Okay. They are generating virtual servers by using one big server. They are generating 
okay by using the virtualization concept you might aware of the virtualization technologies like uh, vmware by using such kind of technology they can create virtual servers now when when they create virtual servers these virtual servers they'll keep available wherever you are doing the business and what oracle is doing is in the most of the countries they are maintaining their data centers you think if you don't take, if you don't want to take the term called as data center simply you can say they are maintaining their servers data centers now say oracle allocated virtual server one for your business now what they do is they will replicate that server to be available in their all data centers in which countries you are doing the business same copy they'll replicate and they'll keep all those in the full sync you can think all are one that's how it works now there is a user called as x the business user is x x is trying to create something you will have one url for that environment for the virtual server they will provide one environment the user x is connected to that virtual server and is trying to do something the url can identify where the user is located and what is the nearest data center to that user it will connect that user to the nearest data center the virtual server which is located you see these are the different copies but all are same all are one and it will be in the full sync do something from india the same everyone can see from other countries also if permissions are given think all are one but in the virtualization this game can be played so if india user is trying to connect to server it will get connected to india data center the virtual server which is available if user is trying to connect from india it is not going somewhere else which takes time and there will be delay in the response you take this scenario you are running the business in india and us you are sitting in india and you are trying to connect to the server unfortunately server is located in us now all the ways the user request should go and hit the server and again it has to respond finally it has to fetch and display the information to the user it is happening the communication the network communication happening between india and us so even in the network also the distance can be measured it takes time if your servers are located in india if you are working in india your experience would be very rich when you hit it will respond immediately since your servers are far away you are trying to connect through network you may not have a great experience the great experience always you can see in case of cloud wherever you are your servers are there with you it follows you because that's how they have their data centers your one virtual server which they allocated for you they'll keep available wherever you are running the business if you are a user business user if you are doing something from india it will route your request to your nearest data center say for example oracle doesn't have their data centers in india no worries you are working from india so what is the nearest data center for uh, india user ue it is not there in uae also it will route to some europe this is how just it will it got intelligence so the, if your user is performing anything on that virtual server it can route it can connect and everything will be in the sync this is all about cloud computing within that by using the virtualization concept they can create the virtual servers for every client they will allocate one virtual server now everything will be taken care by oracle only 
no need to buy the servers because you are getting virtual servers simply you are getting access you are using whatsapp facebook twitter instagram these all are virtual servers only we never had a bad experience with facebook or whatsapp or some other applications in terms of user experience i'm talking about user experience not in other areas whenever you tap it works like it is everything is there in your smartphone you never think it is connecting it is waking up awaking and this and that nothing no messages you get we are connecting we are working very hard to fetch something for you please wait we are saving we are sending nothing no messages everything happening on spot like spark how it is possible if you are sitting in india if you are using whatsapp you are connecting to the whatsapp data center which is deployed in india it is not connecting to us or some other country servers in case of on premise it will always it will go and connect to the server which is located but here you don't need to worry about where servers are where your virtual servers are located with the help of database you take any example google take anything in day in day out what most of the applications or products we are using all are cloud based only no company using their own server uh, physical servers they may be using physical servers in the behind the scenes but when it comes to usage all will be supported by virtual servers so this is the meaning of cloud if you want to use fusion applications you can opt cloud from oracle that means they are allocate virtual server you no need to buy the server you no need to take the license nothing no dba nothing 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 you can just strike out all these what you could see here so you will get virtual servers no need to virtual servers you will get when you get virtual servers you no need to take the license just take subscription the difference between license and subscription so buying car and renting the car if you buy the car it will cost too much if you take the car for rent just pennies so that much big difference you can find out okay that much big difference you can find you don't need fusion apps dba dba team would be there from oracle side to take care of the virtual server you get virtual server with required applications only no installation also required okay let, let me complete few more points i'll take your questions and installation also you no need to do installation the virtual server you will get along with the products please go on mute please try to understand you will get the virtual server along with the applications for which applications you are taking the subscription since servers are managed by oracle you no need to worry about network security administration and all and server maintenance is taken care by oracle cloud dba team and they upgrade whenever it required or whenever it is needed or whenever you want or they want whatever it may be the scenario if anything comes as new yes oracle we can they can do on spot just one click for oracle but if you are doing as on premise so it's a big task for oracle it's a very simple task so that is reason now all the companies what they are doing they are opting for cloud they don't want to do second business of servers license dbs team maintenance and many other things they are focusing what business they are doing they are allowing the people who are doing cloud business to do their business that solution is simplified no headaches you focus on your business rest will take care that's it so this is the meaning of cloud this is the meaning of cloud now you have applications called as oracle fusion financials sorry you have oracle fusion financials application from oracle if you want to use this oracle fusion financials by using your own servers 
call as a, as oracle fusion financials call as it is if you want to use the same applications to cloud include term called as cloud that's it oracle fusion cloud financials application that means your servers are deployed by oracle those are virtual servers it means your product is deployed in the virtual server you are not at all playing with physical servers you where you will have very bad experience when you talk about performance and many other challenges the risk etc so that is the difference between oracle fusion financials and oracle fusion cloud financials application point of view there is no difference only you have to understand the applications are deployed in your own server Uh, that means the servers are hosted by you or the virtual servers are hosted by oracle if the server is hosted by you and you are you are running that servers that is on premise so don't include the term for as cloud if servers are hosted and taken care by oracle that means those are virtual servers you are using virtual servers through virtual servers if you are using any product or any application you can include the term called as cloud to take other term called as oracle fusion applications i am not referring any pay, uh, finance or a cm hcm people sir just i am calling as oracle fusion applications it could be many product families any product family if you call it as just oracle fusion application the meaning is you are using on premise if you call it as oracle fusion cloud applications that means you are using the applications through oracle servers so this is what we have to understand and still there are few more points that we will discuss in the next session in the cloud if you as a company if you want to use the cloud subscriptions so different options are available those we will discuss in the next session from next weekend we will plan to spend 2 hours saturday 2 hours and sunday 2 hours okay since they are just very initial classes as we planned and we are running just for 1 hour or 1 hour 30 minutes max from next week weekend onwards we'll short uh, we'll we start the session at sharp 8 and we'll go up to 10 o'clock if required we can have 5 minutes break in between so this is a uh, this is how that uh, timings we are going to follow so we are done if you have any questions let me know we'll discuss uh, this big servers uh, definitely is maintained at some location right yes. so correct so, yeah so this want to know means uh, is it if something happens wrong maybe because sometimes on premises server also get down so nothing it works so it can be with the big servers also no, right no 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 that, that that is that is there see the engine what we use uh, the technology what we adapt for small bike uh, scooty is totally different from the technology okay we use for aeroplane engine right so they may follow six sigma or some other sigma technologies in the same way as a company you cannot afford for a very 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 advanced servers you are just one small company so you may not invest too much to go with the very best advanced servers which always go very smooth you have a wonderful server but you don't have db available db is an off what what will you do even your server is super here always oracle uses because they are delivering the service they are doing that business they have to be best in delivering the services so they always do, go with the very big servers which are which performance is always good as well as they will have separate team to manage the server okay server is down no worries there will be there will be team who is sitting next to the server 
that is not possible in case of on premise you just you are just one company you have a just one dv that's it mm -hmm. right so that's how it is different okay so we once we take a subscription we take subscription according to how much uh, space we require for this uh, uh, means for this country for example for india so subscription is taken according to the space or uh, means because definitely yes. i got your question so subscription is taken based on the number of applications you need number of users and the period these are the parameters how many applications you need subscription those applications can be accessed by which users and what is the time frame one year or 10 years or 20 years accordingly you have to pay you no need to worry about the space that oracle can support okay. if it is going to be if it is going to beyond the limits then there will be talk but very generally like now what implementations are happening and all there is no talk about uh, space and all they can support these are the prime primary parameters which will design decide your subscription cost okay, yeah. any other questions yeah uh, regarding the backups i mean for these servers on prem on premis servers we usually take a backups uh, and keep it uh, keep it with uh, our gmail or whatever so the regarding these, by our uh, cloud that, team yes they do all those because some disasters etc etc anything may happen so always they follow the best practices when it comes to application server maintenance and uh, do they share this data in the future for example a company uh, is uh, you know not going to uh, you know take subscriptions anymore or just wanting to change their uh, uh, let's say erp from one, from fusion to let's say to any other sap or whatever so do they i mean give that uh, backup to uh, the companies okay yeah that service is also available the backups and all it means you have to buy the server space and your team can manage that they provide cloud space all right yeah they are not going to manage your applications if the application is oracle they will manage they manage the server and the applications if the product from some other vendor they'll they'll provide you the space and the space the virtual server can be managed by them inside of inside whatever the applications we have you have to manage that we will discuss in the next session that that those we call as different uh, service subscriptions part of cloud okay. we'll understand in the next session any other questions please hey lakshman this is ganesha yeah. i just want to know the order or sequence of the classes that you plan to take like first will it be the bpm uh, functional setup manager and then you'll go into gl or how will you do that yes if you want to understand that the sequence wise see let's talk about these applications when we talk about these applications first we will focus on ap then er then cache management then fixed assets gl if you want to start with this accounts payable you have to complete few basic setups that basic setups will complete from gl which support which are required to use any application which we call as common setups so apart from that we will complete all this final will come will come to gl to cover all those after this we will go with this so you can take any one here so the sixth seventh and when we start what if if your target is starting with accounts payable application 
by doing some basic setups from the general ledger application. Without doing some basic setups, we cannot play with this. This I can say, the position I can give one and five. A sequence. Okay. So first we'll do some setups in this, but we will pick as a primary application as this by taking the support from those setups. And rest of all, like you have to use whenever those are required. That's all. Here there is no sequence. So all the setups will start by using this. Our target is which application accordingly we have to pick. Is it clear? Yeah, I mean, just one more addition. So the functional setup manager need not be first configured to learn the particular. We do, we do everything from here only, from configuration manager, functional setup manager. So first we'll do that or you'll show us what, what it means. No, this you no need to see, you no need to treat as a separate application. Okay, this is a place where you can do the setups. We, our focus should be, see, when we are doing implementation, we have to think about which application we, are, we have to implement first. We want to implement, say, payables. If you want to implement payables, please do the setups. Setups you can do from where? From there only you will do it. Then you want to implement receivables. Yes, you will focus on the receivables. From where you can do? From functional setup manager. Okay, that's all. So everything we will start with this function setup manager only. But the sequence we have to go with this application sequence. Okay. Yeah. So any other questions, please? One, yeah, uh, regarding this, for example, if we are first going with the APs, uh, you have uh, given it number one. So one, uh, once our AP is complete, can we, I mean, go through, I mean, uh, during our course this, uh, can we uh, appear for the test of the Oracle? I mean, for example, we completed AP and we, uh, we yes, are you also- can do that. You can do that. Just let me give you some note here. I'll pass the recording. So if no questions, we can wind up for today. Uh, we'll catch up in the next weekend. Thank you all. See you in the next weekend.